As the uh, sun rose this morning, I stood in the parking lot and my thoughts turned to a gentle stranger that kind of walked in on my thought for the day on Wednesday. I was doing my thought and he walks in, he's got, his, his blue jeans are rolled up, he's in bare feet, he's got flowers in his ears, he's got a backpack, and gradually he finally ended up in the first row. And we talked, and we uh, talked for quite a while in fact. He was a gentle guy, maybe a little misguided, but claimed he was on his way to Wisconsin to find his dad. And uh, gave him some money and dropped him off at 131st LaGrange Road. In fact, one of you actually saw him hitchhiking. So I was thinking, did he make it to Wisconsin? Did he find his dad? Is, is he okay? And he, has a, he had a Bible, a beautiful Bible in his backpack and was wondering if he was maybe sitting by some store on a bench reading his Bible. I thought of the words from Isaiah this morning. Why do you complain that the Lord doesn't know your troubles? The Lord is the everlasting God. He never grows tired or weary. He strengthens those who are weak. Those who trust in the Lord will find their strength renewed. We all have moments when we're tired and weary, when things aren't going our way. And we all know that God isn't going to fix that stuff for us. But what does it really mean to trust in the Lord? I guess if we really believe that no matter what we're going through, that we're not alone. If we really believe that in our walk through this world, even the tough parts, that God walks every single step with us, I guess that's trusting in the Lord. And that makes a difference. It makes you feel good inside knowing that there is a higher power that does listen to us and care about us even when things don't go the way we want them to. Do little things ever make you think about stuff? We have a couple planners out the back door there and they look kind of tired. And so this morning when I got here, I, I watered them. They needed some water. And I went to turn the water on the faucet outside and there was a, a little toad sitting on the hose. And my first temptation was to just flick it off. And then I said, wait a minute, Don. If there's reincarnation, <laughs> and if I don't do my job right, I could be that toad someday. <laughs> so be careful. So we and the toad talked. And I just let him sit there for as long as he wanted. And I just thought about the incredible majesty and diversity of God's creation. The sunrise, the toad, a plant that needs water, a guy that hitchhikes from here to Wisconsin looking for his dad. And it made me think about my life. I, all of us, we have gifts. All of us are blessed in many ways that we too often take for granted. And every day, each one of us is kind of called to make the best of it and try to look at life and see the miracles that are around us. And there's so much injustice and there's so much violence. So much of life can be fickle and unfair. So I, and I, I get here early and I go home just for a few minutes to kind of check on Q and Peggy before church starts. And uh, I flick down the news, another mass shooting, more protests, and then a wonderful story. And it's really fun. I know I got the details wrong because the story went by so fast and I can't remember all the names, but it's about a guy named Valentine who plays the piano at the Atlanta airport. He plays the piano so mute people can hear the music. And so there's a guy that's, whose flight has been delayed, so he decides to engage the piano player in some conversation. And he finds out that the piano player has kidney disease, that every night he has to go for dialysis, and then he has dialysis all night, and then he comes back to the airport and plays some more, and he's got a little tip jar there, you know, trying to meet expenses, but that's impossible. So the guy, uh, after he meets the piano guy, decides, I'm going to see how much money I can raise in 30 minutes. And so he goes on Instagram, and 30 minutes later, he goes to the piano player and gives him $10,000. And I, when I saw that, I just got chill. I, I want to do that kind of stuff. And I guess it's gone to 60, 65, and 70,000 dollars over time. And so I just came back here 
And I, uh, I thought about the sunrise. And I thought about that little toad on the hose. And I looked at our American flag in the front parking lot. I thought of that gentle stranger wondering how he's doing, if he's reading his Bible, if he's still kind of homeless. I thought of last Sunday, you know, the car wash, $2,000. In addition to the $8,000 we already did raised by the love bucket. I thought of John Van Buskirk's sister-in-law and the funeral is going to be on Monday. And I thought of Patty Clemick, who's going to go to Kansas for her sister's funeral. And I thought of all the different journeys and paths that come through this place and the miracle and the majesty of all those little moments that I'm too often supposedly too busy to notice. And then the gospel lesson that Madeline just read about the word becoming flesh. And that's true, isn't it? Jesus embodied the gentleness and unconditional love of the God that he worshipped. The way Jesus talked, the way he reached out to those who were outcasts, his ability to forgive and his humility. When you, when you look at Jesus, that's where God comes alive. And now, with Jesus not here physically, the word still becomes flesh. And that is our calling. That in the way we work, in the way we care, in the way we treat others, in the way we handle our adversity, in the way we handle our victories and our blessings, that is where God comes alive. And so now the word becomes flesh in ordinary people like you and me. Yes, the word did become flesh in Jesus, but now the word becomes flesh in the way you and I walk each day. Amen. If you're able to, please rise for the creed.